in, guys. The NXT effect. We started this last night on the WWE Raw wrap up. Uh, we had uh, such a better quality Raw than we did the week before. NXT Takeover was just devastating. Listen to the Raw wrap up. Listen to the midweek uh, war for those uh, uh, initial thoughts. But this is, keeps coming up, and and now I'm kind of wishing we had Matt Carlin's on here as well. Um, but uh, you guys uh, uh, chimed in on that last night too. Uh, but but. There's been a few articles we've seen stuff about, like uh, one of the Bellas saying, "Man, we wish, kind of wish we were on NXT with that time, so we could do something as a women's division. You know, have better wrestling as a women's division. Uh, we seem to have a better show. We, uh, I think it was the TLC uh, TLC pay per view. We weren't too hot on uh, watching after seeing the last NXT Takeover special, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know." It, and and there's thoughts of the dis dissension of of the people on the main roster, um, you know, after all they're hearing and all they're seeing with uh, NXT, you know, this should be motivating them. It's like, hey, these are guys gunning for your jobs, you know. Um, you know, what do you guys think? Yeah, I kind of want to go around. And, and, and w do you think the NXT takeover, first of all, is making us excited as wrestling fans? As holy crap, this is the future. Right. Like this could be, you know, much like we're seeing our Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose is kicking ass on the top. Right. And, Dean, and Daniel Bryan, like these are the next Daniel Bryans and everything. And they're not just a bunch of big guys. You know, um, I, what do you guys think of that? Eamon, I know you had some thoughts. Well, in, in that aspect, uh, it does look very promising. I think uh, especially with the level of talent they have in the next year, I think, you know, it, it's. Cliche to say, but the future does look very bright for what, you know, is to come, hopefully. Um, as far as whether or not I think the NXT has motivated the main roster, um, I don't know about that exactly. Um, I think last night we had a couple of good matches. However, I feel that was kind of a lucky case. Mm -hmm. not, not to, you know, take away from anyone's performances, but, you know, I, I think it was just a good night. Um, I, I say that because me personally, and, and, and hopefully I can attest, other people can attest to this, I would say around the end of last year, end of 2013 into 2014, was probably some of the best times for WWE, right. uh, uh, in-ring-wise and, and just development-wise. From, I think, like December of that year till probably a little bit after WrestleMania 30. We had some amazing professional wrestling. You know, we had all the stuff with the trios, with the Shield and the Wyatts and and Brian and Cesaro and and even guys like John Cena and Randy Orton were having good matches. They were having exciting matches that we were interested in. Um, you know, uh, not always, obviously, not everyone you know has amazing you know performances all the time. But it felt much more motivated. And I was much more invested in the product because of the quality of work. Because you could we could tune into Raw. And we know we knew that there was going to be at least one really spectacular match. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we don't really have that anymore. And I think that that era was about right before the first ever NXT Live special. Mm -hmm. um, and since they've been doing them, uh, they've been rising to the occasion, and they've been the talk of you know the town. And and I don't think it's motivated the people on the main roster to do any better because I feel still think a lot of their work is very stagnant and very safe. I, I think in the case of the, the women, like uh, Brie Bella mentioned in that interview, uh, it's not, I, I do agree. I think if you gave people like the Bella twins or Naomi or, you know, numerous others, just a little bit more time, like a summer Ray or Alicia Fox, they could do some really cool stuff, but it's just the case that they don't give their women any. They don't give them any story, interesting stories. They don't give them really anything, you know, to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's their fault. But we've seen, ma but we see males get a predominantly good amount of time for matches on Raw sometimes, and they just don't. It, it feel, it's been feeling like the past couple of weeks that there's just people out there that are just, you know, wait, you know, playing it safe almost, and and it's kind of depressing. But that's just what I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about you, Bobby? Um, I think that like NXT, as far as like the the their divas division, I don't consider them really divas. I consider that women's wrestling. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, they, they they go out there and they give it their all. 
they, they are granted they are given more time. I think if the divas on Raw would have more time, I think they would be like. Well, last night they gave them a little bit more time, I think, to work on some stuff. Um, had some really good matches on Raw with uh, Naomi and Natalia. Yeah, their sequence, that tag team. Their sequence was really good, even though it was yeah, yeah. Short. yeah. And I actually, um, and I not to not to interrupt. I apologize. But that's I, fine. But I actually really like what they're doing with Paige and the Bella Twins. Like mm-hmm. it's, a, it's an actual story. Oh, yeah, I, feel, yeah. I feel like the stuff they've been doing lately with them has been just – with the Divas title and, and just the story they give them has just been the same old stuff. Mm-hmm. They're, getting, they're doing something different, and I, and I appreciate that. But I think like on Raw and in and, and WWE, the Divas are kind of like an afterthought, whereas mm-hmm. NXT, they're a big focal point. They're right – usually in that spot right before the main event. Well, And I yeah. also think when you look at that, like Raw is – they've called it a variety show in the past, right? I mean mm-hmm. there was even – um, we looked at, uh, uh, I think Matt, Carlin, Matt Carlin's had on uh, from Wrestling Database, like that there was only like an hour five of wrestling in the, in, in this week's Raw for over like 10 minutes more maybe than the, the week before, I think he said. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, But it is like, again, like you have your main storylines, but then everything else is, I don't want to say filler, but it's something to be like, okay, we do this, we put this here so the people that like the chicks get to see chicks, you know, mm-hmm. not necessarily chicks wrestling um yeah. and not to use hey and, and, and you know don't use the meaning form of that but you know but i'm saying like that's kind of the consideration you know it's so in place you know it, it's a segment it's like well we gotta fill our quota to have some ladies yeah. on and you can tell by when they're talking about i was like oh as a diva i get to do, like well, if you watch Taylor mm-hmm. Divas, like as a diva we get to do these premieres we get to do this you know and they don't talk as much about the wrestling that's right. true. Like, I, also, I think. Oh, go ahead, Bobby. I don't think the divas have been a focal point since Trish versus Lita. No, no, and even that was I, just a super, super out of the. Oh God, what do we have here? Let's do yeah. something with. But them. even that. But, but I would. I would say even there was a point where there was like the Beth Phoenixes and the Mickey mm-hmm. James and the mm-hmm. Michelle McCool's where they weren't necessarily like the biggest focal point, but they were still given stuff. Well, and Trish. Given, and given time, mm-hmm. they, I feel like what like what Sorg is saying is like they kind of just give a diva a spot, uh, put a divas match on a show as to fill a spot, or mm-hmm. like a lot of people mention like to make to do like a cool down, like yeah. like that's not the reason, break. yeah, but or a bathroom break. That's mm-hmm. like that's not the reason you should be putting women out there. Exactly. Lita and Trish main evented a Raw one time. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't get any better than that. I mean, unless you're main event in pay per view. Like Charlotte said this week, she would like to main event a pay per view in the WWE. Is that going to happen? Not with Vincent in control, I don't think. Mm-hmm. So, and, and you also got to think, and this is what I think is really, really the reason when you get to that point, you have a lot of old minded people and 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 producers and and and, and stuff in the wrestling business, and I know. This is something I know from just looking at Pittsburgh. Again, I'm kind of slipping on that indie wrestling stuff. But there's some promoters and bookers and stuff that just plain don't like women's wrestling. Yeah. Like they just will not book it or don't think it has any worth or think women shouldn't be wrestling for whatever old school mentality that is. And I think there might be a little bit of a filter of that going on. Mm-hmm. And I think you see that and I'm like, well, they're not so much wrestlers. They're more kind of show pieces that happen to happen to ring. You know, and, 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 and I feel though with like those comments too, there's also a stigma of like, well, these models clearly don't want to wrestle; they, they mm-hmm. just want to be whatever. But the fact that the people like the Bella Twins are speaking up and are like, "Hey, we would like more time. We would like to tell a story a bit." I think mean, I think people like them don't get the respect they deserve necessarily. No, I, I I thoroughly enjoy the work when they're given time to work of the Bella Twins and Naomi and Summer Rae. And you know Alicia Fox and people like them, and I feel like if you just gave them time, they can really rise to the occasion. Mm-hmm. The the tag match they had at uh, at Royal Rumble against Paige and Natalia was really good. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think they're people are so stuck in that st- stigma of well these are the wrestlers and these are the models. Right, and you know he, 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 uh, this dawned on me because we always like oh they're models and whatever and they're trying to make wrestlers out of. Is that so- so much different, and I know the obvious physicality part of it, but is that so much different than taking the football player or somebody just with a good look, good body, bodybuilder guy, and turning them into a wrestler? Not you different know? at all. No, it, no, it isn't. It's just like, you. oh, okay, he looks good. Let's see if he can do the pieces in the ring. And in and, and a certain look, especially a powerhouse looking person or a good looking girl, doesn't need to do all the fancy footwork in the ring to get the job done. 
right? Uh, it's usually the same success rate, right? You know what I mean? If you right. got to bring in a guy just because he used to be like a, a football player or someone who just because they used to be a model, you know what I mean? It's it's usually the same result when it comes to the fans. They're not necessarily interested, or they're Goldberg, or they're Goldberg, or they're yeah, Goldberg. True. You know, or they I come to wrestling. I, and be, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I think, I think Goldberg is a, is an isolated incident. No. <laughs> he had, well, and also, uh, the right, like the rare right booking from WCW and Goldberg brought the intensity and the character for as little as he had to do. He did it mm-hmm. well and people, it didn't resonate with people. So yeah. he, he had that little something on top of the little bit he was given on a big platform and became uh, I want to say he didn't deserve it, but a bigger, bigger star than he than deserved to be in circumstance. Sorry, and, I'll, I'll and, be, and going oh. so sort of going beyond the women's portion of it, uh, I think one of the reasons that I would assume that the main roster is kind of upset over this whole NXT thing isn't just the time they're given; it's the stuff they're given. Mm-hmm. I I would mm-hmm. be kind of upset or complacent if I was kind of given the same formulaic stuff for my feuds week mm-hmm. in and week out. Right, right. We can only I, see I, so I many big with... show Kane matches. We can only see so <laughs> many, like, tag team, like, of two feuds. We can, like, this all the stuff that they always do with feuds. It, it, that gets boring. And I'm sure it's just as boring for them as it is for us. I agree with you, but I think that the, the people complaining, like, about oh they want a spot they want to do more in ring stuff and tell more stories like they do on NXT. I think they're overlooking something very important is and that is, um, yeah they might not have as much in ring time but they have that full terrible WWE marketing machine behind them pushing them getting them to award shows getting them on television mm-hmm. you know selling their merchandise their name is out there because mm-hmm. they have that marketing machine behind them nxt is a different it's a different environment altogether you know what i mean so you that's fine you want to go back down to nxt and you want to do more in ring stuff and impress people with your wrestling ability that's fine but you're not going to go to the award shows you're not going to be uh you know on total divas or anything like that you're not going to have the full power of the WWE universe behind you. Or will you? I mean, I mean we have, does. or will you? Because we have Paige on Total Divas. Paige is not in NXT. Paige is in WWE and has been for a while. Oh, no, but but she came up. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I think I misinterpreted you. Um, no, no. I'm saying I'm saying they want they want the best of both worlds. You right. know what I mean? I right. feel like they're overlooking right. the benefits that they have for being on the main roster and focusing on. Do Just we get a time. point where the people want to go to NXT? I, I fully believe NXT is going to become its own brand. I think you're, I've, I've said this on the show before. I think we will get to a point where somebody, maybe a Sami Zayn never leaves NXT, period. Not because he doesn't swing on the top level, but because that is like he could be the John Cena of the NXT brand. Because right? that's his place. Right? Yeah. I mean, and NXT. I'm sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I'm sorry. But the second part of that is maybe we get to the point where the ones that do feel maybe creatively stifled, you know, I'm thinking, um, I sorry, I'm so sorry, but I just watched Chef twice this weekend after everybody bugged me to watch it. And the guy was a chef at a five star restaurant or whatever and ended up happier and, and successful uh, doing a, to- a, a cu- Cuban sandwich truck. You know, um, maybe uh, the NXT is the Cuban sandwich truck where you get to actually be creatively, um, you know, open and you're stifled in the five star restaurant that is Monday Night Raw. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe John Cena, maybe John Cena can go down to NXT and make Cuban sandwiches. Mm. I mean, go for the title. <laughs> it might not be the worst idea. I know you. I know you're kidding, but that's not a terrible yeah, idea. Yeah. No. Lunch, lunchbox with what you were saying. Like, do you think that's a case of like how what Sorg mentioned in the beginning about how we're getting an influx of talents on NXT and, and on the main roster now as well that are more like the independent wrestlers that are more the people that got into it because of the wrestling, like a Seth Rollins or a Dean Ambrose or whatever, and not more of the like traditional like developmental talents like the ones you would find in like football or or wherever do you think that that mentality of i want to be able to work in the ring and tell a story in the ring more than 
Oh, right. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I do think that 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 adds to it. They where they have that desire and that drive to, um, you know, this is this is what brought them to the dance, and they want to show off the thing that they're best at. Yeah, I I completely agree with that. Mm-hmm. Alex, we haven't heard from you for a while. What are your thoughts on this topic? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, as far as whether or not NXT and its successes kind of motivated the rest of the main roster, I don't know, because, you know, it's like we've already been saying, it's like Triple H said on podcast with Stone Cold, like, NXT really is, like, its own brand, mm-hmm. and you really see the emphasis on what they do in NXT versus what they do on the main roster, and I don't know. It's like I said on the Facebook group. I want to say that, sure, they're motivated, but then I see what's on Raw for three hours. Um, and I, I don't know. I think about like that the Diva segment before the match. And I'm like, I see you know Cameron and her little cameo. And I'm thinking, here's someone who at least had some training in NXT before coming back on the roster and I think she I think it's been better since then but the, when she first came back on after being down in NXT for a little while that was the match where she tried to pin a, a woman on like her stomach or her side <laughs> and that's I don't know I mean okay so as far as now I think what I think the popularity of NXT to some degree has kind of motivated the main roster to step their game up but as long as they continue to do kind of everything what they do booking wise uh and you know storylines and how they time their matches and all that Mm -hmm. as long as that's completely different from nxc from what they're doing especially with you know triple h being at the helm of nxt and doing things more wrestling based on that show versus the sports entertainment on on Raw and SmackDown, I don't think there's really that much motivation. I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like there is some, but not as much as there could be. I, I would hope that there would be motivation, not necessarily from a perspective of I got to improve my work because I want to be better than others. I, I also hope that there's motivation from a fact that, you know, people want to keep their spots mm-hmm. and, and the amount of people yeah. that are getting called up. Like, like Kevin Owens is already working like WWE house shows as wow. NXT champion. Yeah, and he's been I mean, there for two months. Like, yes, that's that's a good point. Because I mean, there's other guys that have been in NXT for the longest time, and like some guys, you know, they've been in NXT, like they've been in developmental for a while, and they haven't even been on NXT the show. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you know, that's just, like. I don't know, because it's like, we, we talk all the time, you know, we really just talk all the time about these guys that are in NXT, we're like, okay, we're sure that they're going to get called up any time now, and then mm-hmm. they don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's better for them that they're not getting called up. Sometimes, sometimes. It no, depends what happens. That's, sometimes, yeah. I mean, that's like, the flip side to that. <laughs> but, but, but I can see that, that sort of real influx of talent happening, and, and I feel like wh- what happens then to, like, for, for example... You know, no matter what you think of his work now, but how long is like a Kofi Kingston gonna last? You know what I mean? That when you know guys yeah. from NXT get called up and take his spot, and we saw it in um, the, like around nine, late ninety nine, two thousand in the WWF, guys from WCW and ECW, the Benoits, the Guerreros, the Jerichos, you know, and then they were bringing also like more guys to the focus, like the Hardys and Edge and Christian were getting brought up. And the guys that had been there and, and had, you know, you know, people like Val Venus and the Godfather kind of really lost their spots and, and they, they didn't have anything for them. And, and you know, it's it, what who say who's to say that can't happen again? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think we're going to, going to be a long discussion. We're going to have a uh, please join us here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, Google Plus, or at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Let us know your thoughts of this. Uh, we'll be sharing this through the week, and, uh, and you know, I, I think there's a conversation we're going to keep having and keep having after every time NXT has a special. Uh, <laughs> so, of course. Uh, in the meantime, please check out if you're, you're liking. You know, well, hey, some of these guys came from some of the stuff we're going to talk about. You can find some of these guys that we're talking about on 
um, um, pittsburghwrestling.com on indywrestling.us. It's the same thing. It's a little store on the little corner of sorgatronmedia.com uh, where we have a lot going on. Uh, go over there. You'll you'll see some stuff like IWC Reloaded, uh, uh, the VOW's January, January jackpot that we're giving away from last week's big question that we sent out. Um, you know, I- I- digital downloads, DVDs. We have a lot going on. Hey, um, I had a little bit of a misprint this week. Um, we have uh, uh, several, about five copies of RWA's Best of 20 2012 um that have some other show on them um so uh if uh if uh you buy dvd next pe- five people to buy dvds from the store for iwc or rwa uh from pittsburghwrestling.com you'll get an extra dvd slipped in there as well uh that's going to be the best of rwa uh 2012 with uh, friends of the show including like ryan edmonds uh jimmy nuts uh Lodi, sign guy from wcw is on there as well um so really good matches on there